Welcome back to TubeBeSeen.com. I am your co-host on this amazing adventure in time and space for the Doctor, Doctor Who, and I appreciate you coming by to check out our latest review here on To Be Seen. Please be sure to help us out and give us a quick like as you're watching this video. It costs you absolutely nothing. It helps us greatly, and it helps us make more content for you and others to see so that we can grow and you can love the Doctor even more. And uh, while you're doing that, please ring the bell and subscribe not in that order uh it's time and space it's wibbly wobbly timey wimey so you know you do it whichever way you want but make sure you do it because it helps the algorithm and lets you know when and what time our episodes do premiere i am your co-host of this adventure joe dove and with us is your host ernesto time lords time ladies welcome back and welcome to the first episode of a brand new doctor we are so excited to be bringing you our take on the first full episode with shooty gatwa but first we have a little sad news the doctor who community found that richard franklin has passed um he, uh richard played um captain Mike Yates uh, from 1971 to 1974. He was a companion of the third John Pertwee, and I believe he was around for one or two Tom Baker episodes as well. Um, he, uh, I believe he also came back uh, uh, for the last Jody Whitaker episode um, and has oh, done a lot of that. other things. Yeah, that was him. Okay. I wasn't 100% sure, so... But yeah, that he was he was there. He was in the round table. Uh, he's done some audio books. Um, he was a great talent, and he will be missed. Yes. So, thank you for everything you've done, Mr. Franklin. But on a happier note, welcome, 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 the fifteenth Doctor. Yes, the the incomparable, the incredibly handsome. Shoot he got one. Doctor Who? Doctor Who? Doctor Who? Doctor Who? That is, Doctor you're never going to stop asking. Yes, this is our <laughs> first full episode with the arrival of the 15th Doctor. Now, the 14th Doctor kind of did a by generation. He's still around, but Shooty is going to continue the adventures in time and space in the TARDIS, whereas... There are no plans for the 14th Doctor to do anything but sit and have barbecue uh, and relax with the Noble family. And he deserves it. Yeah, he's gone. He did, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yes, uh, we were. This is the first time in Doctor Who history that we actually saw the newly generated Doctor actually in action. Uh, normally, the regeneration takes place at the end of an episode, and we have to wait such X amount of time for the first um, adventure with the new Doctor. So we got a taste. We got a taste of the 15th Doctor and the Giggle, and this episode, The Church on Ruby Road, is his baptism in fire, if you will, uh, his first full appearance. Uh, let's get to know... Our new doctor. Yes. Um, Shuti Gatwa was born in Rwanda. Uh, yeah, 15th like August. <laughs> no, the, uh, he, uh, 15th October, 1992. Uh, he's 31 years old. Close to my birthday. Uh, I got boots older than the pair of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, he's younger than me, though. I got him like 11 <laughs> years. Oh. Uh, he had... Um, he is the first, not only African-American, Rwandan, but openly queer actor to be playing the Doctor. Oh, he is. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yes. I, I got the sense mm -hmm. that he was. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. he, I, he might be, but, you know, I, didn't well, wanna, I don't want to assume anything. Mm -hmm. He only came out this year. He only came out in 2023, officially, uh, for, a, for some time before. Uh, prior to this, his big breakout role was in the Netflix show Sex Education, where he played a gay teenager called Eric um, Epilong. Mm. Um, so 
I uh, that's uh, that's where he got noticed. That's where he came to the attention of the BBC and Russ and Russell T Davies. Um, and there was a lot of speculation, as is with the press. You know, you're playing a gay character. Are you gay? And uh, he always kind of, pardon the pun, skirted the issue. Uh, he, you know, wanted to. Sorry, um, sorry, Shuti, I had to. Uh, I wanted to keep his personal life personal, and I can respect that, as everyone should. Um, but he finally did come out uh, earlier this year, and uh, it's wonderful. And his own personality—you see a lot of his own personality. You saw, you saw a, just a taste of it in the in the giggle, and you see a lot more of it in this episode. Uh, another thing that I really, really like is, well, for one, he was wearing a kilt. Yes, his first I, yeah, he mm -hmm. was on the dance floor cutting the mm -hmm. rug, well, cutting the yep. floor up uh, with, with, now was it with the new companion that he was dancing with? Well, he was, okay, he was actually following Ruby. Oh, that's right. Because uh, He actually saw her uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks before in the previous scene. Mm -hmm. It's one of those blink and you miss it. He's in the doorway while she's on stage with her band playing. Oh. Very and, nice. and, and then the sound started going crazy. Well, oh, hold on. You said, you said something that I just want to clarify. Don't blink and you miss it. <laughs> yes, I got Doctor Who puns. That's <laughs> uh, the kind of level of humor you get with Joe Dove. We are throwing you in the agony booth. You realize that, right? <laughs> That'll be next week. Oh, <laughs> but uh, in that, don't blink and you miss it. Uh, Shuti is wearing a completely different costume. He's wearing this great big. You know, this great big hat and this beautiful brown suit. That's that's the suit, but minus the hat. Then the next time we see him, he's got that hot tank top, great kilt, by the way. And uh, for anyone who knows me knows that I uh, I am a kilt aficionado. I was gonna I was gonna cosplay it tonight, but I figured let you know I let, let's ease into that. <laughs> But one of the things uh, that told me before we went on screen was uh, I don't know if you're going to mention it when uh, his uh, reveal that he had gotten the role. Oh yes, well I was actually going yeah yeah you you thank you for reminding me, Joe. Uh, prior to uh, his reveal, there was a lot of talk going around, as there always is with the new yeah. doctor. Yeah, um, I heard like, oh, Joe Doug mm -hmm. might be doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oddly enough, I didn't hear that. No, oh, no, no. I always put in every time, but they never call me. No, I, it's something about mm. like you know I'm not British enough. Even though I, yeah. I can prove lineage wise that, um, you know, we, my family does come from Wales at some point. Mm -hmm. You want? Yeah. Let me know when you want to compare uh, DNA. Uh, <laughs> you don't get much more Irish than this. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, he uh, when Jodie Whittaker was announced, uh, they did this beautiful. Um, a thirty-second commercial showing her face, uh, in in her costume, but Shuti did something a little different. I really like what he did. Now. Like at first, I didn't get it. I was like, "Huh?" And then, this, was, oh yeah, now I get it. <laughs> this was his Instagram post. Yes, and um, and uh, one of the first comments under this post was from Russell T Davies going out. Uh, some talking about the future, so I, I I think it's just very clever, uh, a great way to use. And this is Shuti's personal IG account, yeah. Which which the console room does follow, of course. Yeah. So hopefully Shuti will follow us back. Yeah. I can't, I can't, uh, we keep hope. That would be we awesome. Keep hope alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shuti also has another wonderful. Uh, I believe it's an Instagram post too, or I think it was Vanity Fair, where he's posing with the twelfth Doctor. Yes, I believe that was Vanity Fair or or some yeah. other British mag. But uh, yes, two Scotsmen, uh, because he is uh, what he was born in Rwanda, but uh, he does he is family is from Scotland. Yes. So two Scotsmen, two Doctors, and 
I, just the two of them together, two such handsome men. Uh, and you could see the look of pride on Peter Capaldi's face that another Scotsman is, is, is taking up the mantle and going forth as the doctor. Uh, just absolutely great. Uh, one, uh, one last, uh, one last thing I wanted to uh, bring up about Shuti. Um, he did receive a uh, BAFTA Scotland Award Ooh. for his role in sex education and nominated for three BAFTA Television Awards. So, yeah. Got so, quite the prestige. Absolutely. Well, there, uh, here's a little uh, trivia question for you. And uh, tell you what. One and only one actor... To play the doctor is an Academy Award winner. One and only one. Paul McCann. Uh, you'll have to tune in next week. Oh. For the okay. answer. All right. Well, make sure you come in next week for the answer. And if you comment below, whoever uh, gets it right, we will shout you out on the show next week. So great idea. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the brain mm. Now, along with a new doctor, we have. A new companion. Indeed. See, I met this person and I got whooshed away across all space and time. I mean, I had the most amazing adventures, really. I mean, you wait till you're here because I'm going to tell you all. <laughs> yes, right away <laughs> off the bat, we have a, a brand new companion who, of course, gets that wonderful access into the TARDIS and goes, oh, it's so much bigger on the inside. <laughs> but she, does, she doesn't actually say anything. I don't no. no, she she, uh, she ran back out, did the circle round, yeah, and yeah, uh, which which was enough. Uh, we are of course talking about Ruby Sunday, played by the gorgeous uh, Millie Gibson. Mm -hmm. uh, Millie Gibson, born nineteenth uh, June two thousand four. Oh, she's uh, so young. She is a young lady. She is actually playing her age, nineteen years old. Oh wow! She's is this young, young lady? Yes, Ace. Yeah, she's younger than mm -hmm. Ace. Wow. Yeah, uh, she's actually the same age as another Doctor Who companion. Oh, the, the another uh, another blonde lady. Oh, with an R as her character's name. No way, really, Rose. Billy Piper was nineteen when she took the role in <laughs> a year after. Millie was born in 2005. Wow. Um, difference is, uh, Billy Piper actually had a music career. Yes. Uh, she was a bit of a pop queen yeah. um, uh, before taking the role of Rose uh, in the initial reboot in season one. So, yeah, so some, some really good comparisons there. Yeah. Um, she, um, this is only her second major, uh, major role. Uh, she played the character Kelly... Neelan in a ITV soap opera called Coronation Street and now is being heralded as the new Doctor Who companion. There we go. So, yeah, so kudos to her. Um, I, I, I do like that they're, you know, keeping, uh, keeping a little bit of uh, a continuity here with a young, with a young, attractive female companion. Um, the one difference I see going forward is as a queer person um is i'm not sure how he's going to be playing the doctor so i don't know if there's going to be uh that whole um i would assume will they either. won't they no there's not um, be that. i definitely think it's i don't think so either no it's going to be a mentor system kind of like how um, i agree uh peter capaldi was with with uh, bill with bill yeah for sure mm -hmm. so well I, also if you know uh it, it, in the early parts of the episode uh, where uh, Ruby is playing with her band. So I love the fact that they are keeping with the young, pretty companion for the new Doctor. Um, it's definitely going to be mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities with the uh, reboot, New Who, which apparently this now ends, and this is a brand new story and journey. Uh, mm -hmm. nothing to do with correlation but it, the new who will be recognized on, on the course of and throughout this show just as much as the original doctor who series was recognized in the new who uh, no. so it's going to be uh, a lot of fun and 
Uh, I again, I agree with you. I think we're going to see like a Peter Capaldi and Bill um, kind of a mentor mentor mentor. situation. Yeah, Uh, yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, so it's going to be regardless. It's going to be a lot of fun, and Mm -hmm. I'm here for every minute. But we have to talk about some of the other things that have happened as a secondary companion, so to speak. And one of that I absolutely adored was the so the story in this instance is a baby gets abandoned on a church on Ruby Road, and they named the child after the church, uh, Ruby. And she gets fostered by a foster mom whom I absolutely love. Oh, what she, an incredible lady Yeah, and she then is. My other favorite thing was her mom, the lady's mom, uh, it's the grandmother for Ruby, so to speak, uh, was sitting there in her patois. Ah, uh, me want me tea. We gone so far. You never no get me tea. So I, mm. I absolutely love that. Uh, I, my best friends are from Jamaica, uh, and they're like second family to me. If you, if I wasn't home and I wasn't uh, out at school or something like that, I was at their house, and mm-hmm. they, they were from the mountainsides of Jamaica. So. Uh, once I hear when, every time I hear the Jamaican accent, I feel very comfortable. It's like, oh, okay, I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, I can sit back and relax because uh, you know I feel like I'm amongst family. So when she, yeah, you, you, you got that, you got that whole, you know, childhood comfort, yeah, yeah like a blanket, yeah, thing yeah, going, yeah, exactly. Uh, Carla Sunday, played by uh, Michelle Greenridge, um, and the mother Cherry Sunday, which. I, d- great name. I mean, that's an almost James Bond level name. They're all Cherry all Sunday. Cherry Sunday. Yeah, like they're all. <laughs> I love all the names that they mm-hmm. had. Uh, played by the uh, by the wonderful Angela Mil- uh, Winter. Yeah. Oh, he even her uh, real name just is a, like a, mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Oh, Miss Winter. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, these secular um, companions because we know they're gonna pop up, just like Donna's mom and. Oh, and without Mary. a doubt. Yeah, without so, a doubt. The, it, even, even in an ancillary way, uh, this is not the last time we will see Carla and Cherry. Uh, this probably will be the last time we see that one Bobby uh, about to propose to his fiance. Uh, now I have now I have an issue right there. Okay. Uh, a two carat ring on a Bobby salary. Uh-huh. Uh, that. No, I mean, look, hey, I can I, I can almost believe goblins, but a two carat ring on a Bobby salary, I, I believe no way. Or two, I believe goblins before a two carat ring, absolutely. Oh. Uh, but um, again, just a little insight into this new doctor's personality. Uh, how you know his the new Sonic is able to pick up this two carat ring, and his logic. That yes, I, you are going to propose to your girlfriend. I know it's a girlfriend because it's a diamond, and most men wouldn't pick it. it, it this that whole t- that whole scene yeah, where like he explains, breakdown. yeah, yeah, uh, I loved it, absolutely loved it, um, and all because these gremlins are wreaking havoc on Ruby. Oh well, I guess since we talked about the gremlin, I shall now kill you, Doctor. So I know a lot of people didn't really enjoy the Gremlins. I loved, I loved them. I thought they were a lot of fun because, as a, a young man growing up in Westchester, one of the things that when you get a new car, when you become of age around nineteen, like uh, our young Ruby, and you get your first car, you, the, the myth is you got to ward off the Gremlins with loose change. So. I don't know if you guys have that where you're from, but all right. Uh, well, actually, we're we're we're, mispron- uh, we're misnaming them. They're not gremlins; they're goblins. Because um, that stuff sort of glued onto you, right? Because you four hours it took to, to. We can't take this off all day. Wow. So it is it's quite compressing. Yeah. Um, but it's not the worst I've had. It'd be nice to remove it for lunch, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Was it you that I saw making a cup of tea earlier? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh wow! Did uh, you? I was a goblin on Artemis Fowl, so yeah. I get to. A lot of goblins. It seems like in your resume, by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a short person. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> in normal life, to people who come to say, oh, "You'd be a great goblin." <laughs> goblin. Yeah, that's just Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gobbly Wednesdays. Goblins. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. Because they gobble you up. Yes. yes. So 
Yeah, so, but same, basically same difference. Um, because they always, it's the same idea because they will come and, I mean, the goblins will go right. up, but the gremlins will go and mess up mechanics. Right. And the, uh, We did have something similar mm -hmm. uh, where you throw loose chain. Mostly it's for luck. Yeah. Um, the whole, um, the way it was explained to me was, you know, since we're in the Christmas season, uh, anyway, most people saw It's a Wonderful Life. And the scene where they go to the new Martini house, uh, and um, and uh, Mary Bailey saying uh, gives them bread so the house may never know hunger, salt so you will always have a uh, flavor of life and wine. So uh, it, it's throwing change in someone's new car was that type of blessing, that type of good luck. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Also, uh, you know, about to date ourselves here at the time. Toll machines used to have a bucket with, that took change. Yeah, that's, that's so. Right. We still. Have if you're money. driving down the parkway, yeah, you know, at uh oh, I just spent all my money at at Go Go Rama. Uh, okay, here's thirty five cents from the floor. Yeah, and ironically, that's why I don't get a ticket on the parkway. We still have one of those left that still take change on seventeen, because I'm mm -hmm. actually in Jersey now, so we still have one of those. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool, but um, I just found that. Uh, because one of the things it was uh, another thing was when stuff goes missing, it's because the goblins took it, and mm -hmm. we had a ton of different little fantasy uh reasons why things were missing, lost, or broke. Oh, the goblins broke it when you were asleep, but the goblins are gonna get mm -hmm. you, you know. So, I really like the, the, the play on the lore with this because that's something that I really enjoyed from my childhood. Mm -hmm. So, for me, the goblin king and and such was, was a fun. Villain. <laughs> I know a lot of people were like, including you. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Definitely not my favorite first episode, first adventure of a doctor. Mm -hmm. No. Um, they could have done a lot. And again, almost like uh when we discussed um the, yeah, there they are. Uh, like 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 last week when we discussed uh, the husbands of River Song, it's right, almost right. as if it's almost as if the villain was inconsequential. You needed a bad guy for the Doctor to overcome. So, all right, uh, goblins in a flying ship that even even after the Doctor says they don't time travel, all of a sudden they time travel. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I did, however, however, mm -hmm. I did like the um, the uh, smart gloves. Yes, I, I did like those. Um, uh, you know, great. You know, we're so used to the Sonic being the MacGuffin. Uh, you know that we need something done. Here comes the magic wand. Uh, to fix everything. Now we have the uh, now we have the gloves, but at least. The gloves make sense. And you also got that great shot of Shuti holding onto the ladder with one hand and flying through the air uh, in almost a, you know, Peter in, Pan in almost about, yeah, thank you, uh, yeah. Peter Pan esque yeah. uh, pose. As far as the plot of the story, it could have been better. You know, right. I, I'm, uh -huh. I'm always going to disagree with you on that one because. You know all the mishaps that were happening, and how the the woman that got crushed by the tree. So you thought in the in the episode, I thought was crazy. And the girl grew up. Oh, I'm very clumsy. And then there were too mm -hmm. many coincidences that were happening. She was uh, named after the church and the ruby, and they had the same birthday, and it was like the same setup. And all the coincidences caused the goblins to grow in strength and come after you. There's a lot of folklore with the things like that, and we also have in Westchester the mm -hmm. changers. Um, with well, the skin walkers or something like that, it's been a while, mm -hmm. certain 10 years, but uh, those yes, were that not only has clowns. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but they have a um, they have a way of mimicking the sound of a loved one to mm. pull you out of wherever you are so they can come and grab you. So, and, and anyway, with goblins, when we were young and things went missing or things went broken, things would be broken and nobody could uh, uh claim it. 
we would say, "How was the goblins?" Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I do um, like I, I do like the idea of using and Russell T Davies actually has come out and said that he's going to be um, he's going to be doing he's going to be throwing a little bit more fantasy than just sci fi in with this season and next. Um, so I guess we got our first dose of that. Yeah. Um, knowing if I had known that lore prior to watching this episode, I probably would have enjoyed it more. Maybe that's why I like it. So. Mm, th- that's a very strong possibility. And speaking yeah. of uh, inside jokes, oh, uh, the young lady that you mentioned, uh, Devana, uh, Davina McCall. Yes. Uh, she was interviewing you know, Ruby. Uh, yeah, for for this show, uh, yeah, the, the foundlings, Ruby, right? Because Ruby couldn't find her mm-hmm. uh, lineage, and she was wondering mm-hmm. about her parents. So they did the DNA test, and they found nobody. They yeah. have no parents to state claim. So uh, I have a theory for Ruby. We'll, we'll get into that later. You can well the the, the nugget you have. I did some du- I did some digging and found out that Davina McCall is actually a reality show host in the UK. This is something that I'm sure, unless you looked into it, most uh, most American fans uh, and casual fans, it's not, they would think that it's just another actress playing a part, uh, you know. But this is one of those things that the uh, that the show that Russ and uh, the show just throws at you, um, you know. It is it is still an English show. Yeah, it may be. You know, thanks to uh, the wonderful world of Disney, it may be distributed worldwide, but it is still an English show. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things where if you're going to get into it to the point of obsession the way we are, <laughs> you got to do your homework. Yeah. Um, but uh, agreed, I definitely do like that. Uh, you know, I, I like this the story that you just told. Uh, I did find it a little bit more interesting. And armed with that knowledge, I think maybe it will it cha- helps to change my opinion on the episode itself. Yeah. So my my family were avid fantasy readers, huge LOTR, Lord of the Rings, mm. um, uh, David Eddings, The Shining Ones. We had a ton of different lords. We played D and D and stuff like that. So uh, we were the the oddball African American family. <laughs> 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 but we had such a blast uh growing up and all the little stories that we used to tell just That's it was awesome. just a lot of fun and it just kind of reminded me of that so I, I just really enjoyed it um and and i i love fantasy to the point where some of my favorite video games in the fantasy world one being completely english i think it was uh, lionhead studios or something uh fable the fable series mm-hmm. and then the one of the Almost Doctor Who, Stephen Fry was one of the main villains. Reaver, That's Reaver right. was the immortal villain that they couldn't take down, and he ended up being the ultimate big bad in the final one. But um, they even you had to deal with the goblins there. So the goblins are a big part of the lore, I believe, in, in London. I could be wrong. If mm-hmm. if you're English and you're watching this, and goblins are no big deal, <laughs> let me know. But I'm pretty sure goblins are a big deal over there, and that's part of the the pull. And I think there's going to be a lot more lore. Mm-hmm. Uh, with those type of thing, fantasy mm. elements, and I'm I'm here for it because I love fantasy. Very strong possibility. Um, you know, I I'm just gonna have to start doing my homework a little bit uh, before watching the episodes. Uh, my only issue, well, I shouldn't say only issue, but uh, one uh, gigantic issue that I have is uh, you know, they're going to feed the Goblin King <laughs> a baby. Yeah, a little ass baby. Uh huh. Mm. And a newborn. Yeah. Now, for any of for all of us who are parents, who have been there when our newborns are born. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, our turkey last night, you know, a couple nights ago, was a lot bigger than a newborn. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I don't we're supposed kids, to believe a dog, and it's the same size as a newborn. And you ain't yeah, meat off that dog. <laughs> we're supposed to believe that this little baby was going to feed not only the Goblin King, but that whole crew on that ship. You know, after that exhausting musical number that they did, <laughs> which which took Mariah Carey off the top spot this year for the most played. 
Christmas song. At least it did that. Yeah. yeah. So we're thankful for that. But um, you know, on uh, on one of uh, on one of your other shows, Joe, uh, the Agony Booth is that we touched on briefly. Yeah. Uh, you guys uh, ran uh, Subspace Rhapsody. Yes. From Strange New Worlds, you guys ran through the, ran that through the Agony Booth. Yep. And um, I got to tell you, you know, I disagree with you. Number one. Yeah. But yeah, number two, be wrong. That's I was, I yeah, it. absolutely. <laughs> uh, but I was getting that forced. You know, we have nothing else here. Let's just throw in a musical number. Yeah. You know, I, this wasn't. You know, it wasn't Buffy. It wasn't Subspace Rhapsody. It wasn't even Xena's musical episode. No, but the, there the, was the, no. It was a one and done. It wasn't like half the episode with, oh, we're going to get through this and then pseudoscience and mm -hmm. then, oh, singing pseudoscience. You know, it was just straight mm -hmm. up, hey, we're just having a little catchy. Because yeah. The other thing was goblins were avid singers, too. Mm, yeah, that's, I, I, I'm, I was about to say, I'm guessing that that is, that that's also part of the lore. Yeah. That, so, uh, original that they're musical. Tolkien, original Tolkien books, a lot of the hobbits, the dwarves, and the goblins mm -hmm. would have poetry or songs uh, written in with them. Uh, mm. And even if you saw the Ralph Bakke version of Lord of the Rings, there was the third one, the, the Return of the King, where they would have a song like where there's a whip, there's a way. And the goblins would be whipping some of the lower un underling goblins to like get their work done to build um, uh, Minas Tirith, uh, destroy Minas Tirith. They had to get all the weapons over from uh, Isengard over. So, you know, I I didn't mind it. I, you know, I, I have a thing about musicals. It like gets to the point where I'm like, uh, but I'm a big theater guy. I love going to the theater. I'll see a musical. Uh, the songs will get stuck in my head. When I was a kid, I, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. And but I go to the theater to see music. I don't go and watch my favorite sci-fi shows for right. musicals. That's <laughs> why here. You know, I love, I love musicals. Before I go to see a new show, I will actually get the soundtrack oh. and listen to it so I know what to expect. Um, the last show that uh, last show I went to see was um, Book of Mormon. Oh my god, and, that was the last show I saw. Ah, uh, coincidence. <laughs> uh oh, ah, uh, <laughs> so you know what song I'm already talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I, I was, I was loving it. Um, you know, I was loving it even, you know, before I got into the theater. Um, so it's not that I have a problem with musicals. I don't. I love them. Uh, I actually went to school for musical theater. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I, I auditioned for Juilliard, and they told me to don't call us, we'll call you. Oh wow! I I, uh, I went to school when I first started for creative writing. I ended up uh, hitching myself along with the theater group, mm -hmm. and I was the key grip for nice. college. Yeah, so I, I love mm -hmm. theater. And I, uh, I acted a lot when I was in. I did some commercials and in junior uh, high school and junior high, I was acting a lot. Awesome. So yeah, yeah, I love the theater. All right. Well, one mm. last thing to talk about, and that is mm. the built-up mysteries that are happening in this episode. Uh, there was one little Easter egg that I want to bring up. Oh yeah. yeah, I got one Easter egg that seems to be an ongoing thing. Uh, when the doctor is talking about those gloves. Mm. He mentioned that they handle the weight and the mass and the force of Mavity. Oh, yes, because they, yeah. Because in when they met Isaac Newton. Yeah, they messed he, up. They messed up. And so now it, appear, it appears that it is now canon that the centrifugal force that holds one be that uh, that attracts one being to another, that attracts one thing to another, that holds us onto the ground, is Mavity. <laughs> uh, that's that's a fun one. That, that's a real fun. One. It, it's a it's a cute little Easter egg that I that I love, and part of me can't wait for you know a year or two, and they say it again, and new fans are gonna be like, "What's Mavity?" And then they have to go back to the David Tennant episode to find out. But uh, yeah, there is. We've are Russell T Davies, being the genius that he is, has already planted seeds for what is coming. 
Yes. So and... one, of the, one of the things that is coming is Doctor Who will return in May 2024. Uh, the new series sees the return of Kate Stewart, Rose Noble, Mel Bush, and potentially more. And season one will have the debut of Jinx Monsoon and Jonathan Groff. And if I'm saying your name wrong, I am sorry. But uh, <laughs> there is a lot of mystery about our companion, similar to um, the mysteries that surround the Doctor. And the biggest mystery that surrounds our companion is her lineage. Who are her parents? She was just dropped off at a church. And when they remove her from time, because the goblins ate her as a baby, as we mm -hmm. saw in the, the whole big plot of this episode, and he goes back to fix it, um, there is a big question about who dropped her off. There was a, it seemed like, a hooded figure had dropped off this baby in the church on Ruby Road. So that's why the title of this episode is The Church on Ruby Road. And one of the things that you had picked up on that I didn't pick up on because I couldn't remember the woman's name, but this older woman, this lady, whose name is Ernesto? Mrs. Flood. Yes, Mrs. Flood. And one of the things that I noticed is all the doors that they went in and out of in this episode were all blue. Yeah, you, know, you caught that too. Every oh, yeah. door was blue this episode. So I thought and just a diff and just a slight different shade. Uh, shade of blue. Yeah. And all those shades of blue are all shades of TARDIS blue. Nice. Rose um Ruby's door was um uh, was the uh, was the Matt Smith Peter Capaldi TARDIS blue, which is a lot brighter than um, than other TARDIS blues, and so that was the one that always hit me. Uh, that's the one that hit me because I, that that my personal favorite shade of TARDIS blue is the Matt Smith Peter Capaldi TARDIS blue. Yes, so much so that I when I purchased a new car. I got it in that color. I got it in TARDIS. And I've blue. been in your car, so I know that that's 100% <laughs> true. Yeah. I actually, it's a very dope car, nonetheless. nevertheless. Thank but, you. Thank yes, you. Yes. There's, there's mystery surrounding Miss Flood. Mm. She knew about the TARDIS. She was mm -hmm. meaning that it's in the way. And then when the, her, there are other She says to the other neighbor, you know, right. what's the matter? You've never seen a TARDIS before? So what? And she has this look, and she was the last focus piece on the mm -hmm. camera and winked at the camera. Yep. So I think that there's going to be a lot of mystery surrounding her. Of course, we have the bigger mystery of who the main villain is because we do know that from the trailers that it's obviously uh, the person in the like the piano esque uh, mm -hmm. attire. That's Jinx, that's Jinx. Jinx Monsoon. Yeah, Jinx Monsoon. I think Jinx is probably the big bad, unless it's just a diversion. But I possibly, believe, I believe Jinx is the big bad. But I want to know: is it somebody that we've come across before in the Whoverse that's getting a new uh, up face over? Anything is possible. Anything is uh, possible, Doctor Who. The, uh, Screen Rant did a great article uh, published today that uh, I actually forwarded on, on our Twitter account, the console uh, at the Console Room Podcast uh, on the platform formerly known as Twitter. Yes. It's, I'm, it's uh, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, I know. it's Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it, I highly doubt Elon is going to be listening to this podcast. No, so he's yeah. too full of himself to listen. To uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but we, but I forwarded, uh, I reposted, retweeted this article from Screen Rant, uh, which, by the way, got love Screen Rant. They're usually spot on with a lot of their stuff. Uh, they had some really interesting uh, theories. The one theory that I kind of like, it's a little far-fetched, but with her name being Mrs. Flood, by the way, played by Anita Dobson. Nice. Uh, Mrs. Flood. Amy. Her name has a water connotation. Yep. Amy Pond. Mm -hmm. Her daughter, River Song. Yeah. Could... Could Mrs. Flood be a member of the Pond family? Could if be. you remember, Amy and Rory did have a child, I believe. And yes, this is canon. 
uh, when they were uh, when the angels touched them in oh, the angels right. second act, they were shot back to um, to 1930s Manhattan, mm -hmm. and they still had their cell phones. And uh, if you want, you could look it up. Um, both uh, Arthur Darville and uh, Karen Gilliam uh, did a great video during the pandemic. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. I will uh, when we release the uh, the video. I will put it. Uh, on all our socials, but if you look up Amy Rory video to child or something along those lines on YouTube, you will find this thing that Arthur Darville and Karen Gilliam did a video message to their newborn child. Mm. And what, so that's canon, right? But what that was is child, what was the child's name? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm probably gonna have to go watch it. And um, I, I don't and think they would change the name to from Pond to Flood. Pro Blood. Probably not. But remember that we remember they were went back to the 1930s. It's now 2023. 100 years. Yeah. I mean, it could possibly be a granddaughter. Yeah, it could be. You know, it could be. That's if you follow the logic of that. To me, I, I don't know if Russell, I don't know if Russell would be that obvious. Well, I don't know uh, if it's going to borrow from Moffat. That's the other thing. Uh, that is true. Uh, the Amy Pond and River Song are, uh, are Moffat characters, but they're also some of the most popular characters in all of the last iteration of Doctor Who. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we, we, we went through an entire episode uh, earlier this week about River Song. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, a lot more to unbox when it comes to her. Uh, we haven't even dis we haven't even touched Amy. Uh, hers is one of the most complex arcs of uh, mm -hmm. in and all of television, not yeah. just Doctor Who, in all of television. I think Rivers is the the most complex. Arc. I, oh well, abs well, it's sure. also the most emotional. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it, so it's funny because I, I watched um, for the the uh, Christmas special that we talked about during Christmas, which if you haven't seen it, be sure to go check that out. It's the Husbands of River Song, otherwise known as Jimmy the Fish. But uh, it's a really fun episode. Be sure to check that out. Um, I went back and watched Science of the Library because it had been a long time since I had seen that, that two-parter. And that was such a fantastic episode. Oh, uh, oh my God. And then knowing that all of these things, because it, it, they, they're parallels. Mm -hmm. because the... Uh, Husband's River Song is what happens right before she ends up with, right. Uh, David Tennant. So, ah, so good. So good. <laughs> uh, uh, just so amazing. And then knowing that all of these things that I got to see the week before in this episode yesterday it was quite entertaining. It was like, oh, there's the, the singing towers on Delirium. You know what I mean? It was, it was very cool. It was an excellent writing, but I don't think Russell will will touch anything that Moffat did. We may see maybe maybe not. I mean again, we'll there's only there's only one way to find out. Keep tuned in. Yep. In to May. Disney Plus in May. Yep. This and is. you know we will be here. Now now Joe, I'm sure there's got to be something that we can do in the interim. Oh, there's Folks. Probably. Folks, why don't you let us know? Okay. But we 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 love our fans. We love our friends. We want we want you guys to give us some input. We want us we want you guys to give us some feedback. Let us know if there's a specific episode, if there's a specific storyline, whether it be in classic who, new who, what have you. Uh, um, let us know. Maybe a game. I actually just found uh, a board game that uh, I'm going to play with my family called um, uh, I think it's called Don't Blink. Uh, it's a yeah, it's a it's an angels board game. Uh, I'll I'll do I'll do a little thing on that uh, and put it up on a put it up on our socials. If if there is any specific facet of doc in the Doctor Who universe that our that you guys our fans you want our opinion or us to learn more about, let us know. Yep. All right, and with that, we are going to wrap up this week. Be sure, and then here's the plugs time. Be sure to check out the Captain's Quadrant. Yes, where Jason and I dive weekly, as I am the co-host with the Jost. Uh, Captain Joe Dove dives into Star Trek Weekly with Jason. We had a couple of interviews. We had a great interview with 
uh, Keith DeCandido, and I hopefully I said his name right this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we had our first uh, live Instagram stream, which was very interesting, even though the echo was atrocious. Uh, and if you enjoy Jason, be sure to check out his space where comedy goes to die and where he hangs out with all his furry friends. A lot of fun that's being had there with Jason and Jason. They're not an attorney. And Jason <laughs> is the man who makes all of our amazing visuals. He is so powerful that he has a square right behind his head. Uh, be sure to reach out to him if you're going to start your podcast journey to get your intros for your videography form. And be sure to check him out every Friday with the masterful Rick, who looks like 007 there, uh, every Friday night at 6.30 here in the U.S. and 9 in Australia. If you happen to be an Australian, check us out. And then check out Nita and the Sci-Fi Queens every second Friday of the month. That is going to wrap it up for this episode of the Console Room. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Give us a rating, five stars, please, if you're listening to this on the podcast version. That's very important. And we will see you soon.